Truth Frequency Radio Network. KTFRN. Worldwide. Shadowland Voyagers, in the spirit of sovereignty and self-empowerment, we invite you to journey with us into the Shadowland. Let's rediscover, reclaim, and integrate the fragmented aspects of our individual and collectively held consciousness. Realize true freedom and restore authentic expression. Good evening, everyone. This is Sienna Leah. And I am here with Shadowland Voyages. I'm here with Christina Grant. Good evening, Christina. Good evening, everyone. And Elizabeth Hansen. Good evening, Elizabeth. Good evening, everyone. This is episode 25, and uh, we are going to be diving into shadow and creativity. Tonight's show is going to discuss the call to creation itself, the creatrix. It is said there are explosions at the heart of the galactic core beyond comprehension. The plumes from these ejections travel to our sun and now drench us with the new energy that is currently bathing us to ignite the remembrance of our infinite possibilities. Still, we look at things like the Boston Marathon, Sandy Hook, Cypress, and endless conflicts and scarcity myths that squeeze us down into just surviving day to day in the fear-drenched intimidation of the construct. It, it seems for a lot of us it's getting more difficult, just scrambling to stay out of harm's way. It is true. If it is true that we are a fractal of the organic creation itself, a creator ourselves, there must be a way to access this immense infinite energy now irregardless of our outer circumstances. Tonight, we voyage to the Shadowland to draw to us the means to transcend, transform, and hold our higher ground no matter what. That's a tall task for right now, but that is the task at hand, shadow and creation. How does it work? We're going to look at some inspired Um, quotes from great artists of all times who've created works of art as as way showers. They've used their creativity to disengage from this construct and chart a course correction that embraces life. Well, this is a tall order. I feel humbled by the task at hand, ladies. (laughs) How are you both doing this evening? Oh, doing great. Uh, yes, this is quite a humbling task. Uh, creativity is one of those things that, you know, we can talk about, but it doesn't, uh, w- w- you don't access it until you walk through the shadow land, uh, to be quite honest. So it's it's a tough topic. <laughs> you know, and that's something that is uh, really uh, to the point of uh, what this show is dedicated to. And I would like to uh, stumble dive into into that uh, I was going to start with a with a quote just to help us all relax chill out take some deep breaths go within maybe disconnect from some of the horrific news that's streaming down the pike um, and read from uh, Sabine Lichtenfels the founder of Tamara the community in Portugal from her book Sources of Love and Peace and uh, this is called the artist task art is not based on ability art comes from the encounter with truth unprejudiced seeing true art is always a new birth 
You take part in the aspect of the eye of the world in which the world always consists of new creation. Art is not a question of ability in the traditional sense of the word, but it comes from the inner willingness of the learner to keep his or her inner seeing eye so open that it sees and perceives the new every day. That is the great and true ability of an artist, which lies beyond any fashion or taste. Art is always a new birth. Be prepared. The rest happens all by itself. Do not be concerned with your skillfulness. It comes all by itself. As soon as you let go and understand how to go and be what you perceive, do what you do fully. Do it con consciously and clearly. Then you will rise above the fog and notice that the world is never what you thought it to be. Use humor to destroy your many old ideas and images of what the world is supposed to be until the childlike awe and joy of doing brings you back to yourself. Art is the celebration of creation. Art is devotion and sanctification. Art is the deepest connection with pure beingness without any further intent or goal. Whenever you truly become an artist, you will be lifted up to a level of insight which lets you see and understand the connections much deeper. In this sense, art always, always means working on oneself. The result is the true life artist. The result is a person who with amuse amazing calm has integrated the many aspects of beingness as a creator. A deep reconciliation occurs within oneself and with the world and this reconciliation can bring forth true change. The artist is no longer a victim, neither of himself nor of the world. For this connectedness, you will take back the true joy of life in the simplest aspects of your everyday life. This joy of life is deeper and quieter than the first jubilation that was there in the beginning. You have never seen the world deeper even in its pain, suffering, and unresolved aspects, here you no longer identify with the role of a victim. You have recognized the celebration that you experience when you take in the aspects of the world through the eyes of art. That is the ecstatic yes that Nietzsche knew. New icons will emerge from the new creative spirit of art, and they will have a deeper peace-creating effect than all appeals and all political speeches that come from the point of view of everyday life. Use humor to destroy the many old ideas and images of what the world is supposed to be until the childlike awe and joy of doing brings you back to yourself. So we're talking about creating yourself as a work of art, really. Does that make any sense? It's not about producing works of art it's a it's about producing yourself as a work of art absolutely uh it's anytime i've gone okay you can sit in front of a blank canvas in front of a blank piece of paper have a instrument in your hand and nothing will come if you anticipate an outcome if you anticipate it to feel and sound and be a certain way it's it's almost as if it's it's something that comes through you in a flow um in a flow when, when there's balance on the inside, uh, when there's no limitation to allowance of the flow of creativity, the life force that flows into each of us. But when there's, when there's like open space, that flow turns into creativity. And, you know, we're expressing, you know, the all that is. We have access to the all that is in that space. And I think that's what we're talking about more than anything, not the blank piece of, you know, not the blank piece of paper that you want to write a poem on or the blank canvas, but rather uh, what's in you to be expressed in that moment. Oh, that's really beautifully said, Elizabeth. It's so true. And it's, this is... When we, we talk, we use these words, so flip it, authentic self, authentic energy, presence. Uh, but how do you get there from here? When uh, we have these programmed realities that, that are so based on this fear, you know, the, um, the show with Diego and Jessica keeps reverberating. I know it does for us all. 
because uh, the idea that we keep creating ourselves from a fear and trauma-based images of the past that shut down this flow. And so it, it, the shadow land is this initiation womb birth canal that uh, we really need to get to know ourselves and what are the places where uh, we're not... We can't even access this energy. We've been. This is show twenty-five, and we've we've gone through so many different discussions around that path. But the creativity itself becomes such a a flame, such a purifying flame, such a catalyzing force. It's it's the gift at the end of all of this really deep shadow diving. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I have something. Um, I'd like to read that kind of goes back to what Elizabeth was saying about feeling that wanting to be creative and having the blank canvas. And um, it's written by Carrie Smith. She's an illustrator and author uh, on several books about um, being creative and including a book called Finish This Book, (laughs) which I thought was pretty funny. Um, She writes... (laughs) If we are to partake fully in a creative act, we might experience a plethora of uncomfortable emotions, and that is the point. This process of creating often involves throwing ourselves off balance for a time into a situation where we have to make decisions on the spot. This forced decision-making puts us into a place where we have no choice but to accept what has occurred and then move on, to work with what exists. But it also pushes us into some places we would not normally go, if we allow it. During this whole process, it becomes necessary to sit with discomfort as it arises, letting it exist, allowing ourselves to fully experience the sensation of groundlessness, uh, in parentheses she writes, not knowing what we are doing, and enjoy the giddiness and terror that comes along with it. I love that. I think we're all feeling a little giddiness and terror right at the moment. (laughs) Yeah, it's always kind of auspicious when we do these shows after having so many guests to come on and and show ourselves. (laughs) Yeah. And I would just like to say creativity. There's the one thing about creativity for me is creativity is a way of being. Life is a creative act. Every single thing you do is creation. (laughs) Everything you do, um, whether you recognize that or not, and to what degree you're being creative in your life. Um, so that's something I think it's important. And also then the creative acts of sort of like artistic or cooking or whatever it is that you're feeling creative with, it definitely ebbs and flows. Like the ocean tides comes in and out. There's moments where you're feeling really, really creative and times you're not. Um, and that's normal. But I think it's important to, first of all, realize that you are creative, you are a creative being. And to keep creating, no matter what, always keep creating because the more you create, it sort of uh, someone else had written, uh, creativity begets creativity. And it's true. Um, so I think that's just really important for me is just just seeing your life as a creative act. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I remember the, um, the terror that uh, I felt in my years as an actress, uh, I worked with this incredible director. His name was Paul Rebelo at San Francisco State back probably before most of you were alive. <laughs> no, but it was in this the incredible time of uh, the flower children and that the whole movement that was trying to bring the the creatrix in into every aspect to reinvent humanity at the time. We know that a lot of that got sabotaged, but it was there were huge flows of creative energy. At the same time, uh, uh, like this time, there was also huge opposition. And um, I was working on an Egyptian ritual in the, in the basement of this huge mansion in San Francisco, the corner of Fillmore and Broadway that was later bought by Francis Ford Coppola, this tourists and it was just this we we had we were the gestaltful theater family we were a a creative uh, group of uh, wild ones 
And uh, we, we worked for months on this transformation ritual, alchemical ritual. And by the time we finally got there, my back was out. We had surfaced so much shadow without really talking about it back in the day like that. That I could hardly talk. I could hardly move. I was in agony. I was in the bathtub. I could barely get out of it. We were, oh, it was opening night. And I remember Paul saying, okay, there's your fuel. You know, we had gone through all of this exploration of the underworld and Osiris and Isis. We had evoked probably entities and energies and archetypes all the way back uh, without fully realizing it at the time. So there was this huge amount of oppressive shadow aspect up. And I did not think I could survive, let alone think of a word I was going to say or anything. He said, that's the fuel use it and and burn through it without that you would not nearly give the depth of performance that you're about to give and i i listened to that and it was an absolutely incredible experience because it was a, a transmutation before the audience so we went through it together which is what greek theater you know great tragic theater uh, was about was about experiencing the the shame and the you know the great shadow aspects uh, uh, of humanity and the catharsis that would happen in the heroes and heroines and th- their revelation. We would all go through this together, right? And at the end, the rebirth and the purification uh, would all be experienced simultaneously. And what I'm trying to get at here, if I wasn't going through such incredible hell (laughs) and actually had to work through it right then and there in front of a live audience um it would not nearly have gone to that depth and this is um kind of this it feels like we're pushing up against a lot of resistance just tonight as well in even talking about this um can i talk about something Totally. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I just this this came off the top of my head, and I made some notes about what kills creativity. So I Love thought it. that would yeah, be a please. perfect timing to bring this up. I'm just going to yes. kind of read through these, and I made these are just my own notes. Um, fear kills creativity. Creativity is born in the state of vital interest. Uh, seeing with the eyes of a child, moving beyond contentment, boredom, anger, resentment, fear, self-hatred, and self-pity and apathy. In the lower states of fear, there is no access to the flow of creativity. Complaining kills creativity. And on the spiritual journey, it is the stronghold of the ego, the last to fall away. Logical mind and rational thinking kill creativity. Creativity is not thought-based. Thoughts are tools, but generally get in the way because they're an automated response unit of the body, and once identified with are riddled in judgment based on past experiences as association or comparison. There is no new moment available in thoughts unless one takes the driver's seat and uses thoughts as a tool. Labels and ownership kill creativity. Creativity belongs to creation, not to any one being. Beings can become conduits of that which is of creation. Identification to the body, the self and its emotions, and the daily grind leaves no room for creativity. Creativity is the spark of life from life force, and this flow is broken when the false mask is firmly in place. In the state of identification, there is no room for the flow of life force creation, only enough room to keep the body going for a time round and around in potential. So those are just some notes I made to uh, the limit, some of the limitations. That's great, yeah. great stuff. Yeah. That is great stuff. There's a lot there we could discuss, actually. Um, wow, one thing I just want to, I want to say that is so true, and for me personally, um, I've been kind of in a going through quite a through a lot of processing in the last month or so, and one thing that's helping me get back. Uh, in alignment with the deeper part of myself is being creative, um, like cooking. I, I see recipe, like when I cook, I look at a recipe and it, to me it's a guideline, <laughs> unless I'm baking, of course, because it's, you know, you got to get all your your baking soda and your chemical compositions just right or you won't, you know, your, yeah. your cake won't rise or whatever. But <laughs> You'll have but if Play-Doh. <laughs> exactly. 
But if it's, you know, any other kind of cooking, I'll kind of like flip through my, I have like a, a book of um, recipes I've collected. And then I, I, I just look at something that's kind of inspired. Oh, that looks good. And I look at the ingredients and I go, okay. And I kind of use it as a guideline. And just that creative act in the kitchen and creating something, food and food so nourishing to the soul. And you feed it to somebody else. And oh, I just find that so helps to get me back on track by being creative and um, also just making any kind of any kind of art or anything like that. But there is that first initial block, uh, like you're talking about, Elizabeth, the things that kill creativity. But it's also creativity and being creative also gets you over those. Mm -hmm. For me, it gets me back on track and gets me over those blocks. Well, I was having a, a tough time with inspiration. And so, and I, and I wonder if it had to do with the dark nights of the soul that I was going through. You know, I went through, I'm realizing I went through a couple of them. And, you know, you tend to, you tend towards isolation and darkness, you know. And as I'm emerging out of that, uh, it's like spontaneous creations are coming out of me. Like I pulled out some old artwork that was unfinished and I started finishing it. So this is from like years ago when I was doing artwork or I'll like break out in spontaneous movement. And I'm like, what is that for? There's no music there. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, just how, how removing those lost aspects, like what can be discovered. Like I forgot all of this stuff about me and some of it, I don't even know if I truly discovered like it's like I'm on the brink of allowance of those things. Yeah, I think what's great about creativity is uh, or being doing anything creative, anything. I mean, like I said before, everything you do in life is creative, but getting a little bit more, you know, not uh, bringing the creative notch up a couple <laughs> and doing something that's actually creative. It's really gets, for me, it gets me really in touch with that deeper part of myself and really gets my energy moving. Yeah, because it's an intent. Yeah, I just feel like, I don't know, it's like one of the greatest things we can do for ourselves is cultivate more creativity in our life because it's, it's, that's like the wellspring from which our, our life force energy emanates from. Yeah. And the more creative we get, and that just means like even just thinking outside the box when it comes to problem solving or anything, anything, any way you can be creative and do something different. Do it your own way. You know, like um, in uh, Garden State when she, she makes a movement. I forget how it goes, but she's like, makes, make, does something, like make a movement that no one else has done. Do something no one else has done. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe me think of that when you're saying you start moving. It's kind of yeah. like that. Like, just do something totally unique to you and creative. How, in whatever way. <laughs> <laughs> I totally love this, and it, it, it's, it feels so innocent and, and awe-filled and childlike. And, and never forget, uh, all of us, that this is the energy of the shift. This is the way that one fights a war and becomes a revolutionary uh, to break the chains of the construct it is jumping into the stream, the organic stream of life itself. It really is. It's it's a huge thing, and it, we all have access to it. No matter, even if you're in a prison cell, you have access to it. And they've created this prison cell around us in so many ways. And yet, life is streaming into us. And this is the uh, creative aspect. And no matter how dark it becomes... Um, it, that is just the grist for the mill. It really is. The deeper that you go, you know, you were saying you went into the dark night. Well, you know, in my uh, opinion and my experience, that is the deprogramming. When instead of uh, uh, running in fear from the dark night, you turn and you plunge in. You break the, the control grid. And then you're. it's like uh, when you go to the garden and you pull, you, what do you, you hoe. The dirt, you break ground and you turn things around um, and you make it fertile. Uh, you, the dark night is breaking through and getting all of that great uh, verdant uh, soil up and ready to, for new birth. Mm -hmm. um, you give it air yeah. to breathe. You give it air to breathe as well. Yeah. 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 Like if, the, air, if yeah. the soil is too dense, you know, the seedling can't open. Exactly. And that, I mean, I think, think about a baby bird breaking through a shell. I mean, mm. that's pretty creative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're doing something totally different than they've done before. Or spinning a cocoon. I don't know if they spin cocoons, but I think actually they spit cocoons. But, <laughs> but you know, that's a creative act creative too, too, you know. Um, but I think it's important. If, for me, it's like if you don't see your life this as a creative not a valid act. menu option. Oh. Hmm? I don't know. Very strange. Are we on break? 
No? Maybe not. Well, I was, I don't know if we are, but I was just going to say, if you don't see your life as a creative act, then you're not going to see yourself as having the power to reinvent the world we're living in. And I think that kind of goes back to what Sienna was talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have that power. And a lot of us have been strangers in a strange land for so long. We've been the freaks. We've been the outcasts. We've been persecuted and scapegoated for being so weird and not being able to conform <laughs> and not, and we've been you know pull, we've been making that ground for we've been holding our own and now it's our time to shine uh, and uh, it's so important to realize how creative we've been all along i think there are a lot of people that are listening to this show that are super creative in that they've refused to obey yes. that's a super act of creativity mm-hmm. yes and now we take it one step okay we're not going to obey but what are we going to do what are we going to do exactly i don't think we don't, they don't want us to know how powerful the act of creation is. When we have our energy embodied in us and we're creating ourselves, they cannot use our energy any longer as food. And it's game over. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. Yeah. Our creativity is huge. Yeah. And, you know, it, it sounds like, you know, oh, yes, I made this nice little dinner for my husband. Okay. Incredible, because every act of creativity is an act of revolution when you have transversed your own shadow line and are awake and aware. Every act, because you're taking your power back. That is the, your energy, your soul force. You're no longer just giving it away and being a robot. In, their, in the, the transhuman agenda, you're no longer doing that. So we would also love to hear from you all. Do we have a call-in phone number we can give to people? We do. It's 213-233-3998, and we'd love to hear from all of you. Anyone who feels like they want to call in, have a comment, have a story, anything you'd like to share with us and the listeners, that would be wonderful. Welcome back to Shadowland Voyagers. This is Elizabeth, and I'm here with Sienna Lea and Christina Grant, and we're talking about creativity and shadow, and I have decided this is a good time to read um, a quote from this book that I've been reading this week called The Butterfly Farm. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The quote is called The Butterfly Farm, and the book is The Journey to No Self by Patrick Drysdale. Uh, Once upon a time, there was a boy who raised butterflies. He did this not only for scientific curiosity, but also for the sheer pleasure of doing so. One day he wanted to see if his, if his caterpillars made any sounds when they communicated, so he put a tiny microphone inside their colony, and this is what he recorded. Let's listen in. We should have an escalator in this place, said one, and a wider variety of leaves, mumbled another. To his astonishment, the boy found that not only could the caterpillars talk, but they had a limited number of things they talked about. He discovered that even though all their physical needs were satisfied, their conversations reflected a feeling of boredom. This baffled him. One day, a butterfly landed on a flower near one of the caterpillars. He said hello, but the caterpillar didn't answer. After a few sips of nectar, the butterfly recognized him as a former friend and asked if there was anything he would like to know about inner transformation. There is no such thing, the caterpillar replied. The way we're born is the way we ought to stay. This butterfly was completely bewildered. Some of my friends changed, he continued, and nobody ever saw them again. He didn't realize that the winged creature was one of those friends. The boy found it amazing that there was no two-way recognition between them. With continued observation, however, he discovered that his caterpillar suffered from a very peculiar disease. He found that they were afflicted with autism, a disorder that made them believe they ought to stay the way they were and never change. This condition affected their autonomic nervous system and made them dreamily do what they ought to do without ever questioning anything. Their lives became mechanical.' 
This disorder also blocked their insight to see the connection between the way they thought and what they experienced. Their minds became so lazy that they virtually lost the ability to think for themselves. But one caterpillar, caterpillar was different. This one questioned things, and the more he did, the more he was able to think for himself. This new way of using his wits reflected itself in his outer activities, and his life took on a vitality that none of the other caterpillars had. What's more, he started producing silk on the inside. The boy knew it was only a matter of time before he had another butterfly. It's the same with human beings. Without questioning our beliefs, we experience the same situations over and over again and don't realize it. Life loses its freshness, and we start wondering where all that spontaneity went. So I thought that was beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's great, Elizabeth. I yeah. love that. Yeah. That is awesome. That is so true. Yeah. And with, uh, yeah, the more fearful uh, states that uh, we get into, and let's face it, there's uh, plenty out there to be frightened of. It, it just keeps coming on here. Any and all change <laughs> is, is something to be frightened of. That's what it seems like. I mean, you know, like every time there's even a change in your personal life, yeah, I mean, things must change in the outer world. They just, it's just that that's the way that the pendulum is going, you know. So the best just to flow with it, <laughs> it you know. Yeah, but it's, it's really, uh, there is so much fear now in the collective. It's, uh, I, I'm experiencing vast uh, terrains of, that are, I mean, the, you know, the dark ones don't want to give up. And so um, the thing is, can we access this creativity in a heightened state of fear? I don't think so. The heightened state of fear would be contentment. And that says nothing's going to change or I'm happy as long as it stays this way. You know, that's the ultimate, uh, the highest uh, form of fear that I know of, you know. That's like in, in in our world, that is a high state of being. I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, they say, they say the archons uh, and the, the manipulators, the dark ones, as you call them, Sienna, they lack creativity. They can only mimic. Um, so there's something about control and, and mm, fear that definitely blocks creativity. So stepping out of that definitely allows that create that creative juice to flow and to start moving again um but yeah when you're in that i know when i'm in a fear state being creative is very difficult i think i think too it, it might be um a good idea to kind of state uh just that you know the way that we think of creativity in this plane of existence and gaining access to infinite uh life force creativity are two different things so like christina was talking about you know uh to to start cooking just to begin the to putting out the intent it opens up the flow to like change the uh, recipe and that's where the flow can come in when we're doing things we enjoy the things we love and from that place yes but you know if you're in contentment you're not necessarily going to want to get up and and make a, a beautiful dinner because you don't see it that way you're just like, right. I'm perfectly happy to sit on my couch and I'm perfectly content. I don't want anything to change. You right. Know. But then if you instead say that contentment place and you say, you know what, though, I am going to choose to get up off this couch and go make something and I'm going to freaking make it creative somehow, yeah. you know, and just make yeah. that decision. That's where you start to break it. Yeah, it is a springboard place um, into vital interest, you know, being vitally interested in things. Um, remembering things we like to do, the things that we love to do is like a huge dent in the limitation, right? Just right there's there. There's so many ways you can be creative. I mean, you could go for a walk. You're driving home from work. You're driving home from work, right? You always go down, you know, the main street, turn left on second, blah, blah, blah. It's like go a different way. Get creative on your drive home. I mean, there's so many ways you can be creative in a day and just break it up. Yeah. You know? Drive slower. Take a street you haven't been down, you know. Anything. Yeah. Anything. At any moment in the day, how can I do this differently? Think outside yeah. the box. That's the point. It's like you got to untrain or retrain your mind to work in different ways um, and actually get out of the mind and just go with the flow of in the moment and just this, like, deeper part of you that wants to be creative. That's, it loves being creative. That's, that's the part that is just so alive with life. 
Mm-hmm. Even driving down the freeway, I used to, well, I don't know if it was dangerous or not, but instead of paying attention to the road, I would start staring at the clouds and see if I could see anything in the clouds. <laughs> My body knew how to drive, I guess, you know, but there are tons of things we can do on the way, you know. And listening to music can inspire oh, creativity huge. and get get energy flowing. Yep. Creating music, if you, I mean, that's even better, <laughs> or maybe not better, but it's equally as uh, creative, you know. Definitely. And self-love is an act of, of a total shift out of matrix uh, programming. Uh, being uh, Accessing the self-love, which is the ground of everything in terms of uh, transforming out of uh, trauma-based mind control, is, uh, is an act of creation. When we get these fear-based programs and shame and lack of self-worth, an act of creativity. Sometimes I will just sit or walk and go, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I know you're feeling that way. And all these mind programs are going and putting people down and judging and judging myself and being depressed and being anxious. Okay, what's beautiful about the moment? Well, you, like you said, what haven't you seen on this road? What, what's beautiful about yourself? That, that's a really good creative mm-hmm. meditation. What, what's beautiful about how you showed up today? What's beautiful about uh, the, the way that we habitually put ourselves down and we could turn that around? But it, it, it is an act of conscious creativity to take time out to look at things truly as they are because there's so much beauty in ourselves and there's so much beauty on this planet the animals, the plants, and and the loving way that people show up through the incredible stress they're under. It's incredible how much, and whatever we give energy to, it shows up tomorrow even stronger, right? So that these momentums of creativity are gigantic. And, um, you know, it it does totally correlate to the highest level of the creatrix and the and the cosmic center and the divine feminine and the divine masculine being born because these are gorgeous, super high frequencies of what of, of beauty and truth and sensuality and uh, they're they're this um, they are delicious, absolutely delicious. Ju- this is what we are. This is the organic process of being alive. And you're right, but the, the really, and I love the way that you're talking because this is what we need to do. It's it's getting so thick here now. I mean, I'm in Ecuador in this little mountain village. We all thought we'd uh, escape the, you know, the coming uh, police state and the one, they're coming in with the GMOs and they're coming in with unbelievable bureaucracy. There's, it's worldwide. They're, the cleat brutes are coming down on, on all of us. So this Really learning how to just take baby steps when you just are crashing and burning, which can happen a thousand times a day, anywhere. And like you say, okay, let's make something beautiful. Let's look at something beautiful. Um, and I know that, that you're really living this. Both of you are. And uh, you've both done a lot of shadow work. And you're finding this creative inspiration now. So, um you know, I I love the little example. Little goes a long way. I remember Aisha used to always say, uh, you know, what's in your spice cabinet? Or, or she'd, she'd be sewing something in this beautiful, or she'd have her little art studio with all the little laces and the things. And mm-hmm. she kept herself really in this incredible uh, energy, creative flow always. She was so dedicated to it in little tiny ways, which at the time seemed to me really stupid. <laughs> I'm like, why is she doing that? It's just genius. She's like making this stupid collage on the kitchen table at four in the morning. Like, what is she doing? I had no idea that she was coming back from such deep territories that she was transmuting with these little acts of, of creative care. I think that this is also a part of the return of the mother. Yeah. These little acts of creative care. Mm-hmm. And luckily, she's coming in so strong. If you do a little act, she will just sweep through you and lift you up. And this is what they don't want us to know. That it's, you know, it's yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it feels, it's just a crazy time. It feels so doomy and gloomy to me. It's so ultimate, like, oh, my God, they're never going to stop. You know, they're just making more 
vaccines and more uh, horror shows and more false flags and they just keep bringing it on and bringing it on bringing it on and it, it, it the sense of being powerless is is you know challenging not to feel that way yeah there was another consideration i had about um judging the value of experiences whether it be in the outer world or your personal experiences or just like the way you feel about something um the judging the value of an experience rather than seeing it in new ways um uh it, when, when you start to understand what the purpose of things are, or you, when you look into it, it, it kind of changes the perspective that you have and, and how it affects you on that emotional body and on the spiritual body. Um, and once you start um, setting judgment aside so that you can actually look at the thing, um, you know, you realize, first of all, that judgment is a habitual act and, uh, you know, uh, removing that habit to Im- immediately judge before looking, um, it frees the space for new experiences and new creations. Um, we're constantly drawn to express our opinions and tastes, and, um, and from what I experienced, like in the you know small talk, that's all people really ever talk about. I like this, and I don't like that. And it's you know it just goes on and on like mm-hmm. that. And uh, for the most part, when I notice, like, especially, like, you know, you're looking at YouTube comments and stuff like that, it's like they're unadulterated in self-righteous opinions, and it squashes squashes the creation, um, the different perspectives people bring into a conversation, Um, and it puts a lid on creativity, because all of these things have, um, you know, a journey about them, all these events, you know, and uh, the more we fight amongst ourselves uh, about, you know, our belief, because an authority said and I believe this authority, and they're going to fight about whose authority is right, instead of just bringing in creative perspectives. So that's something that I'm noticing with regard to events on stage and also in relationships. Oh, man, that is so true. Judgment is so huge. Mm -hmm. I really feel that um, there are a lot of these thoughts in our heads that are also really feel like it's stepping up the, um, the amplification of whatever judgments we have. I find, you know, I'll have a little judgment. Suddenly I am judging like a crazy person for an hour. And I went, wait a minute, you know, what's going on here? That it, it just brings you so into separation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, because you can't, yeah, I mean, I have uh, a huge shadow piece with judgment. I know we uh, have, we all do to a greater or lesser extent. It, it, it's, you can't, reach with your heart in a loving embrace of anyone you're judging and it's so challenging because we're all so wounded i mean my god i i look at the community i'm in which are a lot of people that uh are very awake and aware but also very wounded well the whole we've been i mean this has been a it has been a prison mm-hmm. planet and we are so severely damaged and if you are aware of the shadow aspects of people like I am. It, 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 I mean, it looks like the, the y- yuppie bar in Star Wars. I mean, we all are so distorted. <laughs> <laughs> it's really yeah. hard not to judge. No, it's true. And ev- I mean, everybody on the planet is afflicted to some degree or another with this disease called lack of self-love and self-worth. <laughs> It all comes back down to that. You mentioned that earlier. And that's where the judgments come from. And that is just such... It just blocks the flow. The superego, this patriarchal, uh, psychopath, uh, you know, demigod that, that, that w- at the head of patriarchy has been internalized as our superego. And this voice of judgment has been our barometer. You know, what do I do, Daddy? And it's in, <laughs> it's in us. And when you're frightened, you know, you're screaming out, Daddy, help me. You know, what do I do? Show me the way. And this fierce patriarchal judging god has been our anchor for so long and this is where the i don't like to say the word the challenge of self-love uh yeah i mean look what they do to creative geniuses they shut them down and that's what we all experience as children in 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 the construct in the education system don't do not be a creative genius Mm -hmm. you're weird you have diseases you know you have a disorder of some kind you know uh, you know, all kinds of stuff, when in actuality it could be something else going on, but we wouldn't know that because we don't look beyond, if it if it's outside the structure, it's, it gets squashed. Yeah. 
Well, know? just the school system itself. I mean, it yeah. shuts all creativity down in children unless you're taking, you know, the art class, the one art class, or but any kind of creative thinking. Or it just takes it. It just sucks it all out of the children. I know? I had a huge issue growing up that I uh, I would. Um, when, when when there would be like a story and I was asked to repeat the, I forget what that's called, the, they test you on it all the time and it just drove me nuts, like how you perceive the story, you know, are you, under, are you understanding the story? Oh, comprehension. Comprehension, yeah. thank you. And, uh, you know, I was constantly, uh, in my, my level of comprehension was constantly in question. Well, it was just that it, my perspective was a little, a lot different than what they were wanting me to see in that story and whatnot or you know you do you have an art project and they give you the rules and you exactly. find a creative way to do the art project and you get an f because you didn't follow their rules but the way that you equated their rules matched with what your outcome was or what you created you know exactly you can be creative inside this box right here yeah we're talking about <laughs> third grade you know we're talking about nine-year-olds that are being told that your cre- your creation is wrong you know, because it's outside of the box, you know, mm-hmm. and this is happening all the time. What and happens it gets, with everything? Yeah. I mean, all of life. It's like, that's yeah. the whole point now is like, we have to think <laughs> outside the box. <laughs> Just to get around laws sometimes. I mean, there's laws yeah. about everything, you know, and, and every single one of us will have to break a law because there's, it, it, the law is not creative. It doesn't attend to the individual situation, you know, so yeah. we're constantly being squashed. <laughs> well, and you know, children too, it's like they... You know, you see kids, and they mix and match stuff, and they create new things. It's like that's what they do. They grab a little of this and a little of that, and you're thinking, you're yeah. going to put that together? Okay. <laughs> you know. But that's what we need to do. We have to really start mixing and matching different elements um, in our reality to come to a new a creative solution. Um, we can't keep doing it the same way we've been doing it and just really um, – I don't know, widen our view, you know, let's get really creative with our life with just got to think abstractly. (laughs) Yeah. In order to experience something new, you have to try something different. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. It's incredible. Um, I'm noticing that, um, like I said, I'm in South America. I'm in Ecuador. I love these people. They're very Pachamama based, very heart based people. Uh, but now that the uh, control grid, the construct has come in, the people at the banks, the people in government, uh, they've had so much of their uh, connection to their own essential selves ripped out. I mean, way back with the conquistadores, I mean, they've lost. Uh, it's trauma-based mind control again huge deep wounds and uh, you get to the bank and if there's one dot one t or you want you know you need something just be a human being can you push that the, over there do this and you can't you understand this is what's going no these people are absolutely so rigid they cannot be outside the box and it's so shocking it, it's such a in our face example of trauma-based mind control, these people were so terrorized, and it's way back, it's through their ancestors that they were terrorized, that uh, it's such a contradiction, it's such a shadow aspect, because uh, you would think it would be so completely different with more indigenous people. It's very, very tragic to me. This um, outside-the-box thing is so hugely, hugely, hugely important. A lot of us, are just outside the box. I mean, I've been outside the box, and we've been persecuted and scapegoated or, we, you know, demonized ourselves or ended up on drugs or ended up doing a lot of self-sabotage to try to destroy our own energy because it was so... I think this is our time to shine, you know? I, I think that, like, all the freaks and weirdos to just come out of the woodwork and go, we are it, you know? We are... <laughs> Come on, y'all. Wave your freak flags high. <laughs> hey, you guys, we have a caller. Um, we have about four minutes, four, four to five minutes before we take our next break. Do you want to see if they're online? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hi, do we have Kevin on the line? This is Kevin. Hello, Hi. ladies. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to Shadowland Voyagers. Well, uh, wonderful. Thank you, you very much. Yeah. Enjoying the show on a Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Can yeah, you let's talk, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Go ahead. Well, what I wanted to add is, um, it's ironic that you were talking about the indigenous people because I am a descendant of the Anishinaabe people, also known as the Ojibwe or the uh, Chippewa. Now, 
what I've been told from my elders, especially when it comes to regards as women, that one of the biggest reasons why, why they say that women are becoming so disconnected is because, and I do believe it is by design, but look at the shoes that women are wearing. What is the biggest insulation against electricity but rubber? And when they make ladies or they give them the desire of wanting this rubber between them and the Mother Earth, how are they going to feel connected still to our Mother Earth? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They have been doing weird things with women's feet. You know about the in China, the foot binding thing? This was considered sexy, and they bound their feet, and they were completely deformed little stubs. And, yeah, Absolutely. Look at the crazy shoes, the high heels. You know, this is all supposed to be sexy. It completely uh, cuts us off and lets us be slaves, really, of of the patriarchy because we've lost our connection to our roots. And uh, the indigenous have so much to share with us, and it's so tragic that uh, we have uh, created this scenario where they're giving up in such a massive way the connection uh, to their to to Pachamama to the earth because they could be such incredible way showers. I mean, I'm seeing it all over South America, uh, Kevin. The 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 big pharma and the GMOs and all the uh, toxic uh, situations and all the Western in-the-box mentality, and they're just buying it and drinking Their bodies are breaking down. Their cultures are collapsing. This is worldwide. It's an incredible tragedy. But it was engineered to be this way. Um, And uh, I I truly hope that uh, this can mend and that uh, the the indigenous can find the self-love. And uh, I mean, many of us down here in Ecuador have such great respect for these people. And yet it's it's such a hard, hard thing to, um, because the wounds are so deep and the people are afraid to feel their pain and their shadow aspects and transmute that and find the core of their essence again. Uh, It's the the kind of pain that, the kind of torture that some of these indigenous people have undergone is uh, beyond belief. It's it's a very, very challenging situation. Thank you so much for bringing that up um, because it's true. Um, this uh, the indigenous they walked barefoot often for many many miles all through the Andes, and and never uh, it never hurt their feet. And um, if I may add another thing to this, um, now I am currently going through a divorce, and my partner, I, I thought that we were both thinking outside the box. We both, when we met, wanted to do homeschooling. And we both wanted to... Can you stay with us, Kevin? We're going to break. We're going to break, Kevin. But if you would stay on the line, we'd love to hear from you when we come back from break. It's only about uh, four minutes. Stay on the line. We'll be right back, everyone. This is Shadowland Voyagers. defiance of the U.S. Patriot Act and the NDAA. This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. Welcome back, Shadowland Voyagers. Your experience, perception, and questions are deeply appreciated here. Join the conversation. Call in at 213-233-3998 or 888-832-2027. Okay, welcome back. This is Hour 2. This is Sienna Leah. I'm here with Christina Grant and Elizabeth Hanskin. The show tonight is Creativity in Shadow. We are just talking with Kevin. Kevin, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. 
Um, well, wh- where I was going with that is that um, I'm recently going through a divorce, and I thought at the beginning that we both were on the same page and both out of the box. We wanted to homeschool, no vaccinations, uh, eat organic foods, and all of that. And unfortunately, at some point, you, I, I think all of you know when you get to that point of no return that you can't unlearn the things that you learn when you when you experience the heinousness of what the powers that be are doing to us. But with that said and done, one thing that I, I it just breaks my heart to no end is that it seems like women are being um, manipulated to believe that being a mother is not the absolute most creative, honorable, and important position or role or situation that a woman can be placed in, that they get, they, they get actually frowned upon when it's like, oh, you're a stay-at-home mother, and luckily enough, we were financially stable enough where she was able to stay home. 24-7 with our children, but she kept getting, people would tease her or make fun of her or even just like, why are you not working? Wow, that is, that is really, really rough. And we know now that uh, the women's movement, the liberation movement was co-opted in a lot of ways and was a, a plot, it really was, to, uh, to break up the family. And uh, the economy to have everybody working, to have the children belong to the state, and uh, it's it's been incredibly effective. And uh, you know, it's um, of course, I'm a woman. I know that there's got to be a balance in a woman's life, but it's so true. I mean, the mind control that had put on the table that being a mother is not an act of creation is is completely. Uh, evil in my opinion absolutely it's very very sad we're under so much programming in that regard and then we have generations of children when we don't have the care we don't know that we're loved we don't have people present to how do we learn self-love how do we learn to be creative how do we learn to navigate a life when we're slapped in daycare centers and put into institutions i mean this is just making people absolutely addicted to uh, uh, to uh, autumn, you know, to these robotic behaviors, to inhuman behaviors. You can't access your humanity when you've never been shown any. It, it, it's a horrific situation. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm very sorry that you've had to live through that, Kevin. Well, and and just the last comment I'd like to make with that is that. The, the saddest part about it is that with my two daughters is that now that we've put them in the public educational system, it seems like they've slowly and incrementally been losing their creativeness. Yeah, totally. That's what those, <laughs> my daughter used to call out, she'd drive by the school and go, oh, Ma, those are the, the prisons where they put the children, right? <laughs> It's like, I could not say her. <laughs> no, dear, that's your school. I couldn't. We used to drive around uh, the school. I used to I used to be truant quite often. <laughs> and we'd drive around the school blasting Pink Floyd the wall. <laughs> it was awfully nice. funny. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is another thing, though, that I want to point to that you mentioned, Kevin, with regard to um, the lack of support of other women, that she's a stay-at-home mom. And uh, we got to flip the switch on this, folks, because um, you're absolutely right, Kevin. Um, raising your children is, well... It, it is the responsibility that you take on when you have children. It, it's 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 something that you've agreed to do. So I fully support your wife. I fully support everything she's doing and uh, the courage to do so. And uh, if she can somehow find a way to let all of that off of her shoulders with regard to, uh, you know, how can she just stay home all day long uh, and, you know, not work, you know, there, we've got to flip the switch on that one. Because we need to be supporting each other and we need to support those mothers and especially the mothers that are doing it in in, uh, single homes. You know, they have to work uh, for the most part. And so, um, you know, I don't know how we're going to flip that switch, but at least in our uh, 
in the way that we perceive and the way that we consider each individual's circumstance. You know, there may be some situations where both parents have to work, and in that I would ask that each person uh, consider their lifestyle. I've seen some, you know, things with people where, you know, the woman went through all this college and became the CEO of a company and ended up, you know, because it was time and the age is there, couldn't have kids. So we'll adopt one kid and turn around six months later, have twins. And now you've got three kids and you're the CEO of a company. You know, I, you, what are you going to do there? What is your choice going to be? Yeah. And if, in regards to counteracting the, uh, the sucking the creativity out of our children in schools is we have to just be more creative with them at home then and to help to cultivate that within our children and teach them that that is um, part of being human and the more creative we can be with them the better and last thing I'll let you ladies go and I really enjoyed the show but I want to point out that I want to give a shout out to all the fathers out there that want to be a father not just the weekend fathers, but the fathers that are fighting tooth and nail to get every moment they can with their children. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that's where I'm going through. And unfortunately, because of my disability, the courts are going against me and I have to like hire somebody to be with my children. But wow. you, you hear all these other fathers that are totally okay with being a weekend father. And that's just, just so asinine to me. Be a parent. If you're if you're going to take that, if you're going to take that risk of, of having sex with another individual, know the outcome and take responsibility. Thanks, ladies. Have a great show. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Kevin. Thank, Thank you. Kevin. Bless you. I really relate to what he was saying. That's what my father went through um, when I was young, and he it was back then in the seventies. Uh, the most guys usually got fathers was um, two weekends a month. Now you do the math on that. How many times is a child seeing their father in a whole entire year? And it just broke his heart. And I remember I couldn't wait till I was I turned twelve so that I could go and you know say I you know want to spend more time with my dad. Didn't make it to that far. He died when I was seven. But I totally relate to the pain he's going through because I I know from what remember from what my dad told me, but I've also have some writings of his, and it was just broke his heart. It's really sad. Wow, I, I wish he'd stayed on the line. I wanted to hear more about that disability. The court told him he can't uh, be with his own children because well, of... Well, that's like what my father, yeah, my father was disabled. He had a broken back, and so it was the same kind of issue where, oh, you don't have a you know a job, a proper job, so you can't be a proper father? Bullshit, you know? I mean, he was living with his, his parents, so the care was there, but you know, on paper, whatever you want to call it, you know, didn't look like he could provide. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, what a child needs is love. That's, you know, and if a parent is providing love and stability and care for them, that's what's important. That's so important. I have to say down here, I mean, you don't even realize what a police state you're in until you get out of there. Uh, the, uh, they regulate every aspect of your life, every decision. That no, the government has no right to tell you how to raise your children to make the choices of what it is to be a human being. I got to say, down here, this little town, the kids, the kids are in the store, the grocery stores. They're playing all day long. It, they're not like kids bad, adults good. You hide the kids like they've got some kind of disease because they're young. And we have this adult world. Now the kids are everywhere. And you, you just get used to it. Uh, they're on the streets playing. They're, they're in the tiendas playing. They're, they're a part of everything. And they're touched and they're held and they're loved. And they're, they look so juicy. Their eyes are bright. Their bodies look, I mean, completely different. It's a completely different energetic just from the physicality of being present with their moms and their dads as they're going through their day. And they're probably barefoot, like what Kevin was talking about, connecting with the earth. <laughs> they're probably running yeah, around a lot barefoot, of them are. totally connected with the earth. And yeah, that's one thing I remember about New Zealand I'm, is um, 
they're, they're being barefoot there is totally acceptable and normal. Like they get to the kids get to school and they take their shoes off and go into their classrooms. And, you know, it's just, um, I remember that. And to this day, my son, he was two when we lived there before. And, um, he still does like wearing shoes. He hardly, I got to get him to put his shoes on to go places. Or he walk we walk through the forest together, totally barefoot. I'm like, doesn't that hurt your feet? I was like, oh yeah, you're reminding me. I need to take my shoes off and connect with the earth, you know? So that was good. I like that Kevin brought yeah. that up. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, we can can we give out that phone number again, just one more time? Does anyone have that? I'm yeah, to... yeah, I good. have it. It's a two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. Yeah, there's no question or thought that's too small or insignificant. We would really love to to hear from you, just to get in conversation. Uh, you know, you don't have to have some big deal or some great philosophical question uh, to, to join the dialogue. I do have a quote here that kind of fits in right, right in this little location. Uh, it says, <laughs> 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 it's a location on the show. <laughs> um, May what I do flow from me like a river, no forcing and no holding back the way it is with children. And that's Rainier Maria. Ral- Ralke, I I don't know how to say her name, but I love her writings. She's, Ralke, oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, I like that. Yeah, I love some of these quotes. I got one. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. Albert Aww. Einstein. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, how many of us uh, had that one, huh? Here's another one. Let's see here. These, Yeah, there are que- – what is a genius but the power of expressing a new individuality? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> the experience of cre- creativity is an entry into the mysterious. Technique, expertise, and knowledge are just tools. The key is to abandon oneself to the energy that fuels the birth of all things. This energy has no form or structure, yet all the forms and structures come out of it. It makes no difference what particular form your creativity takes. It can be painting or singing, planting a garden or making a meal. The important thing is to be open to what wants to be expressed through you. Remember that we don't possess our creations. They do not belong to us. True creativity arises from a union with the divine, with the mystical and the unknowable. Then it is both a joy for the creator and a blessing to others. And that was by Osho. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. And then Alan Watts says, through our eyes, the universe is perceiving itself. Through our ears, the universe is listening to its harmonies. We are the witnesses through which the universe becomes conscious of its glory, of its magnificence. And that's Alan Watts. So. Mm, yeah, and that goes back to how the universe is evolving, expanding through life, through, mm-hmm. and that's through creation. Mm-hmm. Again, so it's back to creativity and creation. So any of these like personal um, troubles that come up, there are there's no such thing as a rock between between being between a rock and a hard place. There are creative ways to work through things. You know, it's uh, it's just finding you know uh, r- like removing the limitations to f- to uh, discovering that that uh, creative way. And it's usually something that we couldn't have even thought of, and it serves everybody when when it's uh, done in a, a way of allowance. Yeah. You know, it also helps, too, is breaking, is is to, like, free up the creative idea, get those juices flowing, is to, you know, we're seeing a problem or or whatever it is that we want to solve in a certain way. And you talk about this, too, Elizabeth, like, looking at it from different perspectives. And so you start to do that, and you start to look at the, the situation in as many different ways as you can. You start to really open up those creative ideas, then, of how you can creatively problem solve. Yeah. Here's one. <laughs> Everyone has talent. What is rare is the courage to follow talent to the dark places where it leads. Erica Young, the artist as housewife. <laughs> yeah, it's it's truly interesting. Uh, you know, in my my personal experience of this life, uh, it seems like I was much more in touch with even the things that I loved to do and the things that I liked, you know, the, the, to my, that were to my taste, you know, um, that I just kind of set those things aside along the way. 
and, you know, maybe I got a criticism of some sort. You know, we don't do things perfect the first time, but that's not allowed. If you don't do it perfect the first time, it's not a talent of yours. That's the belief. And it's just not true. Um, you know, discovery, you know, discovery is uh, fun in the mystery of what, you know, what what you might find there. Um available to you once the 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 limitation within you to express that is removed there's a mystery in in what is to be discovered because many of these things that we are talented in were pushed aside at very a very young age and that's how i feel actually um like you know a year ago i was like i have no idea uh what i want to do with my life i have no interest i you know i wouldn't even know the first thing to bring about creativity it was like the furthest thing from my mind so it's you know it's it's just one of those things that um you know inspiration and creativity come about when there's room to move when there's room to actually let that energy flow through us um when there's so much blockage like constipation there's no room for anything more so you know uh, we don't get to remember and discover those things that we're good at um especially once we've forgotten what they are <laughs> you know I, I used yeah. to say, like, I don't even know what I want in life. You know, I have no idea. Because no, I look around and nothing seems very interesting. But that's the perspective that I was carrying, that complaining, you know, uh, uh, kind of diminished perspective that everything is dark. And in, in holding that perspective, it completely blocked me off to even having a purpose for creativity. You know, the whole 2012 thing, I think, is that's one of the jerks that, that I got inside was that life wasn't uh, worth that expression being, you know, what's the point? Nobody's going to recognize it, you know. Uh, there's all kinds of things attached when we're in those darker places, you know, like recognition yeah. and, you know, because we don't love ourselves you know, we want recognition from the outer. So we're looking at an outcome or a return for our efforts of creative creativity. The ownership aspect, you know, is what comes into play there. So, Well, I was just feeling, you know, what Kevin said in this, this internalized police state where the uh, culture is actually being uh, told to think on each other and turn each other in and shut each other down. And, you know, what, the more fearful it gets... It's just like in Nazi Germany, you you tell on your neighbors, you monitor each other, and uh, you make sure that if there's anything that's springing up that's original, that's part of the organic life force, it's put down. I mean, you know, we were programmed into that corner, and then, yeah, what is the point of anything? It It is depressing. Yeah, I mean, it, it is our responsibility to to move beyond that that particular perspective. Um, you know, it, it eventually it's just you realize it's actually uh, uh, the way to the way to die real quick. You know, it's it's not living. Um, yeah, I have more to say about that, but for some reason I went blank. <laughs> it, it just it stops creativity in its tracks because there's no point to it. So get out in nature, start, you know, loving Mother Earth, see the beauty of her, you know, uh, just walk out into nature and start looking at the beauty and, and, you know, look at the leaves, look at the butterflies, look at the intricate patterns on the butterflies' wings, just, you know, get interested, you know, watch the birds as they fly in the sky, uh, you know, just get interested in things. Okay, recently I've been, uh, I think I might have mentioned this on the show, is, is uh, like last year here it was really quiet during this time of year when the sun's coming out and it's getting all summer and beautiful. And this year there's like a ton of kids that moved in through the winter. And the initial response was, my peace and quiet is being disturbed, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I had to flip the switch because I was getting very disturbed and more and more every moment. And there's all this intense energy in the field, you know. I'm creating it for everybody that I live near. And so I've just like flipped that switch and I'm like, I'm going to get interested in the kids. I remember I love kids. I haven't been around kids for so many years. And so I just got out and started meeting the kids in the neighborhood. And it has changed my perspective on, um, you know, the general ambient noise of the neighborhood during a summer beautiful day you know it changes the whole perspective so uh, that's a huge act of creativity huge, go meet yeah. your neighbors yeah exactly exactly break down the Stop barriers seeing as the enemy yeah yeah, yeah. 
the enemy, the one who is disturbing, you know, it's like we're, we're all trying to be non-disturbed all the time. <laughs> and uh, sometimes those disturbances are the very things that spark creativity, that spark, you know, new things to do in your world, you know. Yeah, well, when you're really deeply wounded, you know, animals crawl off into caves. When, when people, uh, when animals are threatened, they get very quiet, they go autistic, and they hide. And when you're in a trauma-based mind control society, a police, a growing police state, the, you'll find yourself doing this. So it is creativity, the creativity to go, all right, tr- first of all, recognize where you're at and try to shake loose even with a teeny tiny uh, perception shift. That's creativity. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I mean- th- that's what you were doing. This whole shadow work stuff is it takes creativity on each one of our parts because it's an individual journey, you know. All all the methods that people provide are just maps. So that just doing the shadow work is a huge aspect of creativity to to try to understand your particular construct and what's in the way, you know. How are you going to question what's coming up, the the chaos that's coming up in your life to be questioned? Mm-hmm. So and also you letting know the, f- the creator. Excuse yeah, me. and also yes. to let go of the fear of what's the outcome. You're talking about the outcome. And that sometimes that stops us too. Like, what's it going to, how am I going to do it? What's it going to look like? It's like, don't worry about that. <laughs> Just start doing it. It's like one foot in front of the other, you know? Yeah. That's really important. I find in my life, it's like if I get too hung up on what, you know, I don't know, like even just going back to just cooking, like, well, I don't know how's it going to take. I don't know. Just throw some stuff in there (laughs) what what does it feel like you want to put in there put it in you know we'll find out in the end that's the fun and the mystery you were talking Mm. about yeah and it's just um yeah it's just that's letting go of all of that and just being in this creative flow moment with your life every day and like you said just how do you get out of a situation it is creative you got to get creative with it yeah if you get stuck in the in the catch 22s then um, you're not responding with your creative potential there's another answer and also, you got to turn off the TV, get off the internet. <laughs> you know, I mean, that is, wow. Like, if you want to just stay stuck in your little hole, that's a really good way of doing it. So that's one thing. It's because I find, like, when I, like, just go, no, I'm not doing any TV. I'm not doing internet. Then I'm like, do 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 well, what am I doing? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh. Um, and I literally start creating. I'm a very creative person. I love art projects. And so it's like. That's when I can do them because I'm like, well, I got nothing else to do. Let me. <laughs> and that's the thing too. Like people tend to think like create being creative and doing art is something you get to do. It's like a luxury you get to do after you've done your work and your chores. But I don't think so. I think it's something we need to um, add to our daily diet of life. Yeah, we make different choices and and habitual things. You know, like this week I was like. You know, I'm not going to do so much internet research before the show, and I'm going to do other things. I'm going to turn off the computer, and I did for quite a few days. You ladies both know. (laughs) I turned off the computer, and I went about doing different things, and I had a great creative week. I did. I did. That's so good because that is actually really good to be creative for all the people around you because that's, again, you're getting those, those, those juices flowing. Your life force energy is moving, and that's really good for everybody. Not just mm-hmm. you. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, I'll ha- like with regard to like the artwork, I'll have like a picture in my mind of something I want to get on paper, but it doesn't ever translate that way. It comes out so much better when I just let it go, let go of the picture that I had in my mind. I mean, and things just happen. Like if you're working with pastels, you know, it's just like, oh, I didn't mean that color. And then you move it and it just like comes out with like the perfect, um, you know, uh, um, shadow and light. And I don't know. Like I wouldn't have done that. You know? And yeah, and see that's a great metaphor for life again because that's what we do when we're creating in our life, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Moving or what you know, it's like you have this idea of what it's gonna be like, you kinda get this general intent going, but the outcome is not gonna be exactly as you thought it might be. It's gonna be a little different, but it's gonna be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because it's going to be your creation and it's going to, you know, so. Yeah, if you stick with that picture that in your mind, you know, you're not allowing, you're not opening up to the flow when you're in the moment of creation. Um, so let the picture go. I mean, that's the inspiration yeah. and that's the intent. But life is going to take its own course, mm-hmm. you know. And, and if it's not awesome when you, you know, with your finished product, guess what? It doesn't have to be done. You get to keep creating. 
You, right. You know? And it, who knows? Mistakes are oftentimes the beginning of a new creation. So true. Repurposing. Yes. That's creative as well. And we are going to break. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, creativity. We're in our final half hour here, and uh, this is really a great show. I'm loving the energy of this show. Uh, it it feels so sweet and relaxed and um, authentic, and and it's just a cool show. I'm I'm really enjoying this. You're not Yay. alone. <laughs> You're not alone, Sienna. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You thought you were going to get crickets, didn't you? <laughs> oh God! I... All right, all right. I got a quote: "Exalted and bounding within the tight limitations of my skin, do I remember the freedom and joy of my eternal being? It is here, inside of me, always." Knowing so wisely, waiting so patiently, loving so unconditionally. And sometimes my bodily prison walls remember that their glow is fueled by the greatest bliss of all, that of having touched infinity. There you go. There's a vision of creativity, touching infinity. (laughs) That one was kind of (laughs) sexy. Kind of cool, huh? (laughs) I have a quote of my own that's not as sexy, but it's just, it's interesting. Hey, go for it. (laughs) I wrote up a little ditty. Question and process beliefs to free the space for new experiences, new ideas, and new creations. Learn to say, I don't know, but I'm interested enough to find out for myself. If there is little interest in a belief, let it go completely or save it as a question for when the interest arises on that subject again. Do not claim to know what an authority has shared to be truth unless you have looked into the matter yourself. Make it yours or let it go. This is a trait of one who is a conduit for creativity. Step off the carnival ride and live a creative and joyful life of living in the mystery. This is a mystical experience. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> who, wrote, who wrote that? Yeah. Me. You did? Yeah. Yay. This afternoon. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I was catching up. <laughs> I was playing catch up and it just flowed out of me. Aw. See, mm-hmm. that needs to go up on the internet with all these like quotes about creativity. <laughs> this is yeah. Hansen. <laughs> and by the way, y'all can join us at www.shadowlandforum.com. We have places and we have dialogues for that, and we would love to hear from you and share uh, your thoughts, what's happening to you, whatever. Uh, th- there's a whole space for that. There's some very cool people uh, cruising through there. So that's a spot where you, you can, uh, can show up. Yes. <laughs> you got crickets again, Sienna. <laughs> Crickets, crickets, crickets. Well, I'm really excited for my new life that's approaching, that I'm, I'm in the birthing canal, as some of you know who listen to the show. We are in the process of moving to New Zealand, and I'm super duper excited because creativity is going to be number one in our life. And it's just awesome because that's what it's going to be. It's going to be revolving around doing art and being creative, not only just in our day-to-day you know, workings, but, but actually artistic projects and um, i'm just really excited cool that's the good <laughs> news are we going to tell them the bad news <laughs> what's the bad news oh no, you, no. You know, I, I don't know where my energy is going to be available but it is going to be going to art that i'm excited about <laughs> so, <laughs> i'm speechless i'm dumbfounded I do have to say that for years my pain has been compounded by the added insult that I've felt 
shooed, ridiculed, and questioned by others who just have no idea what I'm talking about. People close to me who love me and who I love. People who, in a sense, don't really know me because they don't know how to look into a creative psyche and that creative drive. So I, 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 I'm feeling into the collective on uh, the shows often, and the feeling I have is uh, a lot of the mind control that says you have to be cool, you shouldn't show your feelings, uh, and you get so humiliated and put down, especially the young people in the schools, but even in the workplace, you know, you have to keep kind of um, this uh, suppressed kind of persona, this false mask going on and in that kind of environment creativity uh, really can't flow because you get so scared that if you show up as yourself you're going to be really put down and ridiculed but we that really breaks down to a self-love right actually is a shadow projection that uh, we are giving those people the power to determine whether we're good people or not, whether we can feel good about ourselves or not. We've internalized that internal judge. And when we decide we're okay irregardless, suddenly that whole game changes, right? Yeah. And I think that's one of the huge uh, mind control pieces. That, and a lot of young people, they're, you know, the adolescents, they feel so inhibited and shy about all the changes in their body and everything happening to them. It's just so scary to really show up as you. But it isn't once you really understand the creativity of self-love. Because then whatever other people are projecting, this, this police grid, that we're uh, learning how to do to monitor each other, to keep each other in the control grid, you know, it no longer affects you. And I think that that's um, a big piece of uh, this creativity. It's the creativity to find a way to go, that's their stuff. Exactly. You know, I, I have a story around that, Stan. I'm glad you brought this up. Um, uh, I think it was like the end of last week, I, w- I was on Facebook and somebody had posted this um, BBC uh, video. It was like BBC did an interview of these um, people that went to this outdoor concert. I think it was Lollapalooza or something like that. And they they were playing a joke on the people going into this concert. And they were asking them uh, questions like, you know, um, how about this band? You know, they were questioning like the more unknown bands. And they were just making up any old name. And uh, some of them were hilarious. I wish I could remember the, the detail, you know, the detail of the story. But they were hilarious names of bands that didn't exist. And pe- and the pe- and the people responding were like, oh yeah, they're like totally cool, and I can hardly wait to see them, and and everybody's laughing in the background, and you know, and it, it is it's in those moments where you see we have a vanity epidemic, you know, if people would just be courageous mm-hmm. enough to take off that mask and say, I don't know that band. But it sounds interesting. Can you, yeah. can, you, can you tell me about them? Or when are they playing? Do you have the schedule? Something like that. Be authentic and say, I don't know that band. But to save face and to look cool, they couldn't say they didn't know that small itty-bitty band that they made up. Well, the, what they really want desperately is to be accepted. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's what well, it's it is. It's become so huge. I mean, this is one of the biggest mind control programs is the marketing of love. And vanity, like you said, and having to look a certain way and having to act a certain way. And wow, I mean, if you have, if your parents have been working, if you didn't get that nurturing at the beginning, there's that inner child is wobbly in there. You know, is really terrified, is alone, is is insecure, is unloved, is doesn't know how to ground and put a and and then is constantly trying to get that grounding. And uh, then the society is key. said, well, you can't have it if you look that way or you can't have it if you act that way. So the self-love thing is really uh, a, a way to break and the creativity of the self because it creates an authentic ground of being. You can develop self-respect uh, 
And it's so attractive. It's so attractive when people are coming from that real place, even the differences. The differences are the most interesting aspect, you know. Um, Yeah, it's so attractive to see someone acting from their authentic expression. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more attractive than that. And I don't care how different you are from me, you know. I'd rather because I get kind of bored here, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it does inspire creativity in in an individual. It's like, oh, look at their cool, unique expression and what they're doing. And it's like, ooh, I don't know. I I, I love that too, the differences in people. Mm -hmm. And and it inspires you to um, do and and like be and dress and uh, present yourself or present whatever the way that you've created it, the way that you love it. And uh, granted, there's going to be people that have their opinions, but this, you know, who cares? That's their business. It's not yours. Mm-hmm. And and, and well, I'm telling you, no matter how unloved you have been as a child and through your life, it is not impossible to love yourself. It is not impossible. Listen to the Tito Scott interview. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I go back to that, yeah. Yeah, Teal Scott. I don't know what episode that is. Shadowland Voyagers. We've got the YouTube channel up, y'all. Uh, that pulled every excuse I ever had right <laughs> off the table. Yeah, but it really does. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's not it, self love is attainable, but it takes work initially to get that going. You know, absolutely. Yeah, get that going. Get that going. Find the creativity to uh, to love yourself. Creating exactly. acts that make you feel good about yourself, creating acts that bring joy and nurturing and good energy to others. That's all the creative flow. Yeah, you got to get out of the box that was created for you. <laughs> get out of that. And I find when I get out of one box that I got, there's all this room and spaciousness and it's like, woo. And then I realize I get to the edges of another box. I'm like, wait, hold on. There's, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, there's like, a, there's a period of a comfortableness and a little bit of a, a, you know, maybe not a severe dark night of the soul, but kind of what I've been going through in this last month or so, just this, this process of birthing through that next layer and then pop out you come. And it's really comfy and got lots of room to move and then boom, you hit it up you hit you hit the, the the ceiling on that box, you know, and it just and that self love and that self worth piece and creativity is what keeps you moving and growing and expanding, evolving. Mm-hmm. And and in getting interested in the way out of the box, you know, get interested in what it is that's confining you in that box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get interested. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's true. There are a lot of layers of this, but we also know astrologically, cosmically, energetically, um, we've had uh, astrologers on, we've looked at this from a lot of different angles, as many other people are. Your stuff is going to be in your face, y'all, mm-hmm. whether... And you're either going to be projecting it, acting it out, it's going to be making you way miserable, or you're going to be transmuting it through your creativity. Because right now, there is not anything else in between that I'm seeing. People are crashing and burning and acting like such jerks or so fear-based or are getting so locked into uh, craziness, just going down the tubes and breaking apart, splitting apart. Scary, scary, scary stuff it doesn't need to happen. If you do this uh, self-exploration and you do it with self-love and you, and you start falling in love with yourself and falling in love with the creative flows of the organic life force itself, you can ride this thing out as all the way down the rabbit hole. And it is. It's an incredible adventure. And it is so empowering because you can wake up. I don't care how hit you are, how down you are, how sick you are. Every day, it's in your, it's in your hands. It's in your power to do that alchemy, to transmute whatever's up, to transmute the, um, the dross into gold within your own being. And you don't need a lot of money. And even if, you don't, even if things are getting scarcer. And the, I mean, as things break down, our creativity is going to be what reinvents the world, mm-hmm. both for mm-hmm. ourselves personally, all over. The, we get this thing flowing, and we get into some serious situations. You're going to be the leaders in your neighborhood because you're going to be in an original energy. Life is going to be informing you. There's huge intelligence mm-hmm. in the creative flow of the universe. There's a cre- intelligence to remake everything uh, with love, with connection, uh, with unity, consciousness. It's pouring in from the 
the galactic core. It's coming in the sun. We're in a whole new field. We're, you're getting so much support for this. But if you try to block it, if you try to be straight Jane and Joe and go with the program because it's so darn thick and scary and stressful, woo. Uh, you know, it, it's just going to get so tough. It, and a lot of people are going to go down in, in some very strange, tweaked out, sick programmings right now. I mean, I hate to <laughs> that up, but you, we have a choice here. Yeah, there's no, there's no way to get around experiencing um, the, the pain, the repressed pain from the past. I mean, it has to be experienced. So, but in that moment, just know that there, that it's, that it's a, that is a temporary aspect of the process. I, I think that's where the, the, the constipation is, is that fear to experience the pain. But what we don't see is we're experiencing, we're experiencing that pain every single day. Uh, it's just repressed. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's like we've mm-hmm. got to release that so that we have that room to move forward. If we keep living as if that pain d- d- doesn't exist, um, you know, there's, there's, there's not really any room for anything else. Or feeling like that pain, like life is happening to you. It's something that's being done to you. Getting flipping the switch, like you're saying, and taking uh, ownership and getting um, responsible with it, and being creative with remaking your life. It's like Sandy, you're talking about getting to the bottom. Yes, if you choose not to do it on your own accord, then you will hit rock bottom. Um, but the beauty of rock bottom is there's only one way out and that's up (laughs) and so the rebuilding will happen then at that point in time so one way or another it's going to happen um and it's really awesome when it does and it's really um it's so like you say the the adventure of life it becomes so exciting to live when you start like you said using your own two hands to create your life to rebuild it it's your it's your creative act you know, you become a conscious co-creator, and nothing is more exciting than that. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a deconstruction going on and a reconstruction potential. That's the thing right now. And the deconstruction can be very scary. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, they say, oh, you know, there's only fear and love. Like, okay, I'll just won't choose fear anymore. There's a lot of fear. There's just a lot of fear and I, I can see down the road because not enough of us, of us are. If more of us got this, there would we would have to. It wouldn't come back in as uh, Kelly Lachey says, the liquid mirror. Right, the universe is presenting us in our face circumstances to own everything that we're afraid to face, or if we face them, then it doesn't have to come in that way. Yeah, it, it, the, it, the awakening in the dream, right? The Paul Levy mm-hmm. thing, the the mm-hmm. shadow, the projection. It's the unit. We're it's here for us to become illuminated, to become the awakened ones, to become masters, to become the creator gods and goddesses, to become universal creators of light. That's what we're here for. We're not really here, you know, for our job. We're not even, you know, we have each other. We're not here for our work. We're not here. We're here for this evolutionary process. It's going to happen. Happen, whether we uh, participate or whether we don't, it's mm-hmm. what's happening. It's, it's so, happening. yeah. And participation is is what happens with you on the inside. I, I you know, it's it, it, you, you can't fix anything in the outside until you, you know you're clear on the inside. I keep thinking of this like thought that you know we need like um, like a. a a group of conscious people to get together and be a think tank, you know, <laughs> to, to, to be open to putting all those perspectives in the bag and shuffling, you know, see what comes of it. Because uh, right now we seem to be in this like, you know, do we choose fear or love kind of thing? And inevitably there's going to be something that, that, you know, triggers each and every one of us, you know, whether it be a divorce or, you know, uh, uh, you know, you're, yeah, I don't know. It could, there's so many possibilities of what's happening for people on a personal level. And I'd say that's where you put your attention on is what's Absolutely. right in front of you. Yeah, um, when you see, yeah, exactly something coming up. For me, what I find what works the best and what really seems to get things moving is, especially because there's patterns, right? Things are just like the same thing always happens with the same person or with life. And every time it comes up, the next time it comes up, do something different. That's when you get creative with it. It's like, okay, well, how do I normally respond? Okay, don't respond that way. Change it up. Do something different. And that breaks the cycle. That gets things moving. That's what, that's for me is the key. 
Yeah, and once you're in that place, then, you know, you can uh, hear the call of life that says, you know, I, uh, you know, do you want to do something in the outer world, you know, mm-hmm. and then you, you don't question whether or not you're capable. It's, it's a calling and you just do it. You know, that's, that's where the creativity flow is, you know, as in doing, in life will have you do things you never thought you would ever, ever do. <laughs> Yeah, but you got to get yourself out of these repetitive patterns yeah. first before you're available for the new stuff because life is like, you got to deal with this first, yeah. okay? Get this shit taken care of, then we can move on to the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you got to switch, you got to flip it from reacting, how you normally react to something, to responding. That's your choice. That's in the moment, that's your creative choice where you make a decision on how you're going to do it differently this time. Yeah. I love how full of joy the two of you are because you're not avoiding this. You're going through it. You're going through it. And listen to them, everybody. I mean, you are just like bubbly and and so enthusiastic. And you're Shadowland Voyagers. You're dealing with this stuff. It's not like a nightmare of endless torture. And if you face your pain, you can't ever get out of it. And if you see that, you'll hate yourself and be so ashamed and embarrassed you can't ever face another human being. I mean, all these thoughts that this is the way they have us trapped so that we obey and keep this little grid this little nazi keeping each other while they feed off of our energy i mean it it's such a there's a feast of a creative feast just waiting for us the mother wants us to be happy the divine mother she's all about pleasure she Mm -hmm. wants us to be yeah she wants us to be lovers. She wants to be, to be in love with life. That's what the life force wants. Now, this thing is a total opposite that we've been programmed in. It's so disempowering. That's the whole point. Keep us disempowered. Keep us from being creative in our lives. And, yeah, when you, when you flip the switch and you get this shadow piece, I guess you want to call it. Yeah, it's exciting because suddenly you are empowered from within. You have that you have yourself back. You're in alignment with yourself and with life, and nothing feels better than that. Yeah. Anytime, one, one little thing that I've noticed in, in my own life and in doing the work of uh, diving into the shadow, um, I think essentially uh, what it translates to for me is, is that in the moment of um, a conflict with a person, and this is where I see it the most, or when I'm having bad feelings later, thinking about something that hurt my feelings or something like that, when I look honestly and uh, realize that in any conflict or in any situation that I'm in, what is my part? Not I, I don't look at the other person. Who care? You know, they did their thing. That's their responsibility. How did I contribute to this? How am I being complicit with uh, lack of compassion, lack of love? You know, what is it that I'm? Uh, how am I responding in in this situation that is not lovable or that is not loving? Um, and in that moment and seeing, you know, like for me, I saw that, you know, I was constantly wanting to fill that, that void, you know, that void that I was unlovable. And so, you know, I was being vampiric in relationships, you know, I just wanted, you know, express myself and tell these stories. And in effect, I was like, you know, chaining people into a conversation that was really intense that they didn't want to have, you know, that, that was just one thing. And I, I, I looked at it openly and honestly, and I was like, wow, that's intense. And I would have never seen myself in that light, not even for a second, because I know uh, I have a sense of that divinity in me that doesn't it doesn't want to see the, the, the darker aspect of, of that of that divinity, that experience of coming into the third dimensional reality and experiencing all aspects of our being, not just the good stuff. You know, and once once you come to a place of peace with that in which you've been complicit. That's it. Yeah. I love it. Love you all. <laughs> love you all. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. You could do it. <laughs> <laughs>